on YouTube now. I'll be hi YouTube. Be getting started shortly. Just uh, gonna connect to Facebook now and uh, be getting started shortly. Should be live on Facebook. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to day one of the open house. Of course, you showed up, the market crashed. Uh, what can we say? You guys are great. I love it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I do have a, a three-part presentation prepared for you. You're gonna like it a lot, and it should make perfect sense. And let's show you how I trade, why I trade, what I trade, and the whole nine yard, basically. So let's go ahead and get started first, as always. A disclaimer to let you know, let me actually show you this disclaimer right here so that my picture is not in the way. A disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only. Also, while you're reading this and making sure you agree with it, I want to say that um, if, if you're not in the open house and you're just uh, tuning in online on social media, feel free to click the link in the description that will take you straight to the room where I'm doing this. I'm holding the open house, free open house uh, today through Friday. So that's link is in the description for that. OK. All right. Now we're going to switch over to the presentation. And oops, uh, that's not what I meant to do. This is what I meant to do, I think. OK. And we're going to talk about, uh, well, first, we're going to talk about three ways to trade earnings season. The only three ways that I know of personally, um, uh, for those that are not familiar with myself, I'm uh, director of education at T3 Live, professional full-time trader th since 2007. Before that, I used to be a full-time accountant, auditor for a big four accounting firm called KPMG, uh, based here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Uh, actually, they're based now in uh, New Jersey, but uh, the, the firm I worked at was in San Francisco. Uh, lead moderator, obviously, of the Strategic Day Trader Room, head of the Strategic Swing Trader Program. I do the private mentorship program where you spend a, a whole week with me in person, just like in a setting like this. Uh, and this is going to be coming up next month in just exactly 30 days from today or so uh, here in the Bay Area. And I've created the Earnings Engine Program, among many other things. I don't want to bore you. The, what I want to tell you is I'm just like you, a full-time trader. Now, for those that uh, are new to trading and think that, oh, my God, this is like uh, too much. Uh, where, how am I going to do? How am I going to be able to pull this off? Just remember that Elon Musk had zero experience in rocket science and was able to land a rocket on a boat okay, in the ocean. Just think of that. Uh, of course, we're not, none of us is Elon Musk, got it, but uh, still, that should give you hope. This is Jeff Bezos' office in 1999, 20, 21 years ago. Today, as of last night, when I put this together, uh, as of last night, Amazon was worth $923 billion. And this is his office 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we're not talking 100 years ago. 70 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago. That's his office. That's what his office looked like. He thought he would be selling books. That's why he started Amazon. He did pursue his dream. He was, uh, I think, a, an investment banker on Wall Street making good money and decided to call it quits and per pursue his dream, which is uh, the Internet, basically. All right. And for those that have been trading for a while, that are not quite new, but maybe have struggled to get going, maybe have, um, you know, you've tried different things, didn't work out, um, and you maybe you feel it's too late or, you've, you know, it's late for you. Well, let me tell you one of my favorite short, uh, short stories about the fisherman who one day went out to sea uh, to fish, and it was still too early, and so it was too dark, and so he, his foot hit, upon something and he picked it off picked it up and uh, was probably washed ashore from some shipwreck or something and he found out it was a sack filled with pebbles 
So he started to entertain himself until dawn by flinging those pebbles far out into the sea to see how, how far he threw the pebbles and he, to see if he could judge from the plop how far he threw the pebbles. And when the day began to dawn, he looked into the sack and found that it was filled with precious stones. He found three stones left. So he didn't know it. He was tossing those precious stones too late. Too late. Not too late. Three precious stones left. Not too late. Love this story because it, it, it's, a, it's about lost opportunity. And we often think that it's a do or die. But life always gives you a second chance. There's always a second chance. So for those that have maybe tried, uh, took a shot at trading, didn't work out, I don't want you to think it's too late. If you're here, it's not too late. And then the second thing I want to say is, I hope this open house changes things for you because it's, it's a double open house for both the strategic day trader and the strategic swing trader. So I hope we can make a, even a little difference and get you uh, started on the right path. All right? Okay. Without further ado, here is what I want to talk about today. There are three ways to trade the earnings season. Do you know what they are? Do you know what the three ways are? Okay. Three ways to trade the earnings season. Do you know what they are? Anybody? Well, gorilla trading, which is entering before before earnings season. So entering, I mean, I'm sorry, entering before the stock gaps, entering before the stock gaps. So that's called guerrilla trading. I'm going to show you what that, what that is. Day trading, entering on the day of earnings when the company reports in the pre-market or post-market and you, we day trade the stock the day of the gap. And number three, swing trading, entering after the earnings are out after the earnings report is released uh, and taking swing positions based on the gap. So again, three ways. You've probably never heard this before. Entering before the stock reports, the day it reports, and, and then the pattern that sets up after it has already reported. Three different ways. So I'm going to start today with, and then tomorrow or the day after, I'll do part two and part three. So I'm going to show you what guerrilla trading is about. Now, you've probably heard of guerrilla warfare, right? And so this is kind of the same. This income producing style utilizes a sniper's hit and run approach. It looks to buy a stock on Tuesday, for instance, and sell it on Wednesday or Thursday. Conversely, it calls for shorting a stock one day only to cover within the next day or two. Here's a tip for you. The T3 train trader uses the daily chart to find guerrilla trading opportunities. Now, this is not just, you know, lecturing you and talking. I'm going to be calling these guerrilla trades. I just call them earnings plays. They're not, I don't call them guerrilla trades, but they are. You get in at the close, get out most of them, 90%, 80% the next day at the open. So they're guerrilla trades. In this section, we'll reveal a few of the of my most cherished trading ta tra tactics. The, these are tactics and trading techniques that were designed specifically for the professional trader who seeks a frequent number of short-term trading plays each day. These following tactics are so reliable for me personally and us as uh, you know, I have there's four or five hundred people in the in the program for the members that many traders have decided to focus exclusively on them to earn their living from the markets. Some also day trade, swing trade, do earnings. I do all of that because I'm here 24 seven. I mean, I live, eat, breathe trading to tell you the truth. So might as well take advantage of the other uh, styles. But some people I know personally of people that don't do anything else, don't bother with day trading, don't bother with swing trading, and they just do these guerrilla trades. I've always taught that the professional trader only needs two to three highly reliable trading tactics in his arsenal in order to earn a very comfortable living trading. You're about to learn to be aware, be made aware of six such tactics. 
These tactics, tactics will help the trader consistently grind out profits day in and day out. They're not always, they don't always result in the way of huge gains, but the consistency of their wins from quarter to quarter, every single quarter is profitable, makes them an indispensable addition to your trading arsenal. All right? With these six guerrilla trading tactics, your trading can be taken to an entirely new level. So in advance, allow me to say, welcome to the professional trading circle or the professionals trading circle. All right. Welcome to the professionals trading circle. All right. Uh, here's what put my guerrilla trading on the map at T3. I was doing it just on my own, keeping quiet because I truly didn't want to even share the strategy that I'm about to share with you. Truly, truly, I didn't want to share it. I was afraid if people learned about it, that everybody would start doing it and it would get, you know, I would lose the edge. It would lose its edge. Okay. So I didn't want to do anything about it, but I was doing the trade of the week review for a program called the nightly game plan, which is now called the strategic swing trader. And so I did the trade of the week video, as I always did for T3. They asked me to do it. Uh, it was the only form of marketing that we did for the strategic swing trader at the time. Again, it was called nightly game plan. Did the trade of the week. And in that trade of the week, I showed off my account performance the last four weeks. 30 days of earnings. Just show, showed it. Here's the video if you want it. That's the link. Or just Google nightly game plan if you want to watch this video. It was just a my regular weekly video where I did where I showed my trade and logged on to my account showed my performance T3 saw that I made that's before you know when when we still pay, had to pay commissions that I that I made seventy eight thousand dollars net after commissions in one month and they figured they figured unfortunately that wait a second Sammy's got an amazing idea and this is something special. I want we want him to write a, a, a course for it because we think it would sell really well, which is what they asked me to do, which is what I ended up doing. I didn't want to do it, but I went ahead and did it anyway. And it's called the earnings engine, by the way, if anybody's wondering what it is called the course. Uh, now, this was in 2017, so that's three years ago, not three, two years and two months, right? Two, two, two years ago, slightly over two years ago, because it was at the end of two, 2017. And that was the first year that I, start, that I traded earnings. So I made $78,000, and it was between two different accounts. One was E-Trade, uh, which I used just to buy the stock itself, and one was uh, Ameritrade, which I used, I kept a small account. I think I had twenty thousand dollars in it or something like this, and uh, for options, right, for stocks that I th deemed risky or wanted to try with options, and I made eleven thousand in that account, and I made sixty-six thousand in the E-Trade account. Notice I paid eleven hundred dollars in commissions in just one month. So the the combined total of the two was seventy-eight thousand fifty-nine dollars. So when T3 saw that, they commissioned me to write a, a course called the Earnings Engine. But that's another story. Now, last year, some of you might have seen the video where I show, showed you live while I was still in some positions, actually. I still had some positions. Uh, this video where I did, uh, I scored, yeah, I made $87,000. That's after commission because we still had to pay commission and IB is super expensive. Here's the video, the link also for it at the bottom, just or just Google it, 86.8 thousand, almost the best, This it was the second best day of day trading for me, second best day ever. Uh, that's the link for the video, but it's on YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's in my playlist. And then I, I, I did many other videos like this last year. In May, I did a video, $37,000 in eight days then $31,000 in one day. Those are the actual links, but you know, so if you, you want to just copy them or just, again, you can Google that, the titles or YouTube them. Uh, I had another day where I made 38,000 net after commission, after everything in one day. That's all 
look at this. It's all August. It's so weird. We were just talking about uh, August being an incredible month just on Friday in the room. Um, and um, because I think, so funny, August 2017, uh, no, 2000 and not sure what year, I had, I had uh, th that year at least, I had the best day, I had the best day, let me see. Yeah, I had the $46,000 day. In August, look at this, August 25th. And then the couple day, the day before that, so weird. 15,000, we're just talking about this August being a great month. I don't know why it is. It's the start of earnings season, I guess. So that's why. 15 the day before that, the day before, no, two days before that. Yeah, whatever. Uh, how much was this? 14.7. It's incredible. I don't know why August is such a good month. But when I have, when it's a good month, it usually is the best month of the year for me. In this case, last year, August, in three days, I, I netted 150. Six thousand dollars in three days, so I, I don't know why. I mean, it's earning season, but it, but I've had also other earning seasons. I mean, there's earning season right now. Then there's April, there is uh, uh, April, May, J July, August, and then October, November. I guess August is just special. So so I, I've been able to have these huge days, as you can see. I don't make thirty-eight thousand dollars a day, obviously, but these were all uh, last August. Um, here is how I discovered this guerrilla trading tactic that I'm about to share with you. Uh, many years ago, I began noticing a specific pattern that seemed to tip me off to the earnings reaction. It told me when expectations were right for a longer short term uh, trade, a large reaction was coming in my favor. I simply called it the earnings play. Um, at first, I thought I was seeing things, so I hesitated. I spent this, the seven, seven years studying the earnings play before I started trading it, because I'll tell you why in a minute. On the downside, I missed out on a lot of money. On the upside, it gave me confirmation that the strategy works uh, because I discovered this in 2010. So between 2010 to 2017, I never took a, a guerrilla trading trade. Um, so now, how did I discover it? I live on the West Coast, so the market closes at 1 o'clock for me. Between 1 o'clock till seven, 9, 10 o'clock, the time I go to sleep, that's a lot of time of doing nothing. So what I used to do was get on my computer after the close and scan uh, TC2000, which is in the background, and looking on the daily chart, looking for swing trading opportunities for the next day. And this is how I got good at reading charts, is I would look at 2,000 charts a day after the close, one by one. I had nothing to do. I, was, I had quit my job, committed full time to trading, and I had nothing to do after the close. And so I would look for swing trading uh, setups after the close. And every day almost, I would notice a certain pattern. And when I saw it, the next day, it was a gap. It was, it, it gapped. The stock would gap in, in what would have been my favor if I had, if I, if I put a bet on it. But I'm not a gambler and getting in before a uh, company reports no doubt is gambling because what if the company does do really well but the CEO says oh but I have lung cancer and I'm stepping down the stock could easily crash right so I spent seven years looking at the at the charts and looking at this one setup but I never took a single position with the exception of Netflix I one time did it as a guerrilla tactic and it got from 100 to 124 I think or something like this to 120 that was the only exception. That was the only time I did it. But in 2017, the first part of 2017, the first earnings season, it was a little slow for me. I decided I've had enough of watching this pattern work and go without me. Um, this strategy doesn't suit my personality because, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a gamble. Sometimes the stock can go against you big time. I've had some big gaps against me. Uh, I decided the heck with it I am gonna go for it and I am gonna give it a try and I was pleasantly surprised so much so that as I showed you in November of that year this is um, I was just a baby trading it because this was the first year uh, that I had only been trading it for I started in April to April May 2017 so just a few months six months at the most 
and I was I was able to net 78k. So uh, so once I got once I got there, I felt confident I was on the right path, and that I just needed to get over my uh, own uneasiness, so to speak, and get going with it. And that's when I developed started working on developing the strategy more. I realized that there's actually six different patterns, not not just one. There's subsets. There there's one concept. And there are variables to it, so to speak. And so I, I, I realized that there's more to it than I th initially thought. And this is why I recommend writing a trading plan, by the way. Because initially you think, oh, what am I going to write about? How to buy or sell? I know how to do it. But when you start writing it down, you'll realize that, uh, that you have, there, that there's so much to it. That there's so much, mo a lot more than you considered. So highly recommend that you try uh, write a trading plan. So let me take the camera off because I see that it's blocking some of the text for just now. To develop my earnings engine class, which again, T3 commissioned me to, to do, I analyzed over 900 earnings gaps. I narrowed the system down to six patterns. Initially, I thought there was only one pattern. Each has a spe specific criteria and a checklist. The average earnings season gives over 150, about 150 to 200 trades per per month basically per earnings season but there are earnings trades throughout the year so I don't really stop uh, when this earnings season is over because there are companies that report almost every single day I mean pretty much every single day some Fridays I would say we don't have any earnings reports but that's rare usually there's companies reporting every single day so you can actually take take advantage of of this tactic that I'm about to share with you for free just happily happy to share it you can take advantage of it basically on a daily basis, especially if you're part time or if you don't have the time to to watch stuff and you just want to get in at the close, get out the next day at the open. You can definitely t t take advantage of it, even if you had a full time job. OK, my big aha moment. Give me one second, please. I'll be right back. I apologize I'm back so here's my here's my big aha moment okay I started wondering what is the common catalyst behind all these gaps truly I didn't know why I would notice this pattern on the daily chart and the next day would gap up or gap down sometimes I just didn't know more importantly can I be in the stock before the gap happens is there a way for me to intelligently get into the stock before it actually gaps. I discovered that the main catalyst was earnings, company reported earnings. And, and here's the most important question of my career. Now, can I use the basic unit to trade earnings? Because all I know to trade is the basic unit. Now, some of you are thinking, what is this basic unit? This is it. Now, most of you have seen this picture before. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it, but it's basically how all stocks move. Picture you see to the right is the only complete mo movement a stock or the market can make. I'm taking my the webcam down because it's blocking some of the the writing. There's no other movement possible. The entire life of a stock and or the market is comprised of this cycle repeated time and time again. The cycle forms the basis for one's ability to predict future price movements based on the laws of psychology and probability. This cycle, sometimes referred to as the basic unit, helps the T3 trained trader know the current status of the stock or the market as well as what's likely to occur next. The key to trading successfully is knowing where, where the stock is in this cycle, what stage is it's in, or if it's transitioning, what transition is it in. The cycle is comprised of four distinct stages, which are uh, ruled by four distinct emotions. Stage one is ruled by ambivalence or indifference. People are just not interested in the stock because it, 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 it came from a, after a big sell-off. They've already been through the sell-off, got hurt, so they're not really interested in it. Stage two is dominated by greed. Everybody wants to be in it at any cost. And the stock, that's when most traders make money. Stage three is uncertainty. Did the market just stop out? Did it not? So a lot of people are wondering. It's kind of like right now. A lot of people are wondering, did, did it just stop out? Is this the real top or is it just a pullback? When stage three gives way to stage four, when it, when we get the breakdown, 
that stage four ruled by fear as fear tur turns into panic uh, the cycle ends and it repeats again so here it is on a real chart uh, real stock so stage one doesn't go anywhere stage two the, the uptrend stage three the top stage four the downtrend and the cycle repeats notice the narrow range bars in stage one that's because people are not interested in it they're just they're, they're, they got hurt the last time around playing it and it dropped most people only play long dropped so they got hurt so they lose interest in it when it breaks out that's when they start to get interested and usually the most novice people come at the top because they start to feel that oh this is the next tesla let me buy it and it just goes it, you know it's too late those that buy late usually exit late and and the cycle repeats this cycle i'm showing it to you on the monthly charts because it's easiest to see it on the larger picture it's easy to see it when the stock goes from 10 to 60 back to 10 right but it's not so easy to point it out when the stock goes from uh, 60 bucks to 61 back to 60. It would be a much smaller cycle. So monthly chart shows it best, but it really is applicable to every time frame. Sometimes the stock doesn't drop all the way back down. It puts in you know higher high higher highs and higher lows. Those are, those are the stock that survive over time. A lot of these companies that go that come all, all the way back down, they just never they they never survive it. They actually eventually go become penny stocks and get halted. The ones that set up like so, that put in higher higher lows and higher highs, those are the apples of the world, the Walmarts of the world, these kind of stocks, right? That have been around for a long, long time. So again, this is the only movement possible and um, it has four transitions, A, B, C, and D. Those are the volatile areas when the stock is like metamorphosing almost. It's changing its nature from being a, a dormant stock that's going sideways to an uptrending stock. So that's what's happening in transition A. And that's the, the time when you really want to look to play it long. Of course, it's the most volatile period for that stock. So you have to be careful. A transition B is when the stock goes climactic, uh, kind of like GSX and Tesla, but it does sometimes it doesn't always work. So that's when the stock goes climactic. C is when it breaks down, and D is the same as B. So C is the same as A, B is the same as D. And then stage two is the uptrend. You play it long on pullbacks and breakouts. Stage four, you play it short. The stock is downtrending on sell setups and breakdowns. That's it. That's what I know how to, to trade. That's how I trade, and I was my hope was that the earning strategy that I discovered, the gap that I tactic that I discovered, that I could you that it would be within the context of this four stage cycle, because that's the only thing I trade. So that was my only hope, and I discovered that it did fall within this picture, so to speak. Sometimes you know the base at the top is not a V pivot like the ones I've showed you, like this is a V pivot at the top. Sometimes it's it's a rounding top, right? Like so right or rounding bottom that's stage one so it's not always a v top or a v bottom got it and these are daily charts so the four stages happen on daily charts uh, monthly charts intraday charts on every time frame okay so far so good so far so good i hope i'm gonna take a sip of water okay all right great moving on so here's the concept for it here's the theory i'm going to show you how to apply the theory also just bear with me it is no secret that stocks follow earnings which is why apple is the most valuable company in the world because they make the most money by far in fact they make twice as much as the next company on the list did you know that? Apple makes twice as much money, net profit, as JPM, which is the next company in the US on the list. And that's why Apple is the most valuable company in the world. But put even more accurately, stock prices follow earnings growth, which is why Tesla, your favorite stock, which loses millions, billions of dollars every year, is worth more than GM and Ford combined both of which are profitable companies. So stock prices follow the money, follow earnings, but they also, more importantly, 
follow growth. That, that's why, as I said, Tesla is worth as much as it is. That's why Amazon, which is doesn't, I mean, it, Amazon right now is profitable. They made like $10 billion last year. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Uh, but they don't make that much money. And yet Amazon is the fourth most valuable company in the con in their country. I was going to say in the world, but now there's, a I think, a Saudi Arabian company that is worth like a trillion plus two tr trillion dollars or something like this. So let's just say Amazon is the fourth most valuable company in the U.S., even though they really don't make that much. In fact, a a Apple sometimes makes in one quarter more than Amazon has ever made since inception. OK, maybe not including the last year or last couple of years because Amazon has been turning uh, uh, over a nice profit. But uh, but usually, actually, Apple makes in one quarter more than Amazon has made since inception. And yet Amazon is right there behind Apple, almost, in terms of the market cap. So why is that? Because Amazon has still a lot more growth to do. A lot, uh, you know, uh, they think it's going to be the future. I, I think so, too. However, until now, there was no accurate way to know how investors would react to earnings announcements. So how could we predict how investors are going to react to earnings announcements and without using inside information, which we know is illegal, right? Um, we all know that stocks and any moving object follow the path of this resistance. Jesse Livermore said that almost 100 years ago. He said stocks follow the path of this resistance which is why trend following works. You can, you know, in uptrends, you, you, they can, I mean, the market has been in an uptrend for 11 years now. In March, it'll be 11 years. So at, as such, when an uptrending stock has pulled back to support and the rising 20, which is acts as support when the stock is in an uptrend, the stock should have higher odds of gapping up in the direction of the trend. And that is the idea behind the earnings play. So, okay, so I'm gonna show you the six tactics that I discovered uh, and how they fall within the context of the basic unit, right? How they match up with the basic unit. So, earning strategy is based on the basic unit. Tra transition A, buy a breakout. Transition B, climactic sell. Transition C, breakdown. Transition D, climactic buy. Uh, as I said, a and C are the same. One is long, one is short. B and D are the same. One is long. B is a short, actually, and D is a long. And stage two uptrend, you buy it through buy setups and breakouts. And stage four downtrend, you buy it through sell setups or breakdowns. So those are the six tactics. Here they are, just so you see it. So transition A, the breakout. B, the climactic top. C, the breakdown, D, the climactic bottom, and stage two, the uptrend, stage four, the downtrend. And now I've matched up my earnings strategies to my actual trades, to the trades that I do, whether there's earnings or not. So here's the first strategy. Uh, it's the transition A. And on, the, on that basic unit, there's that arrow pointing it out right here. So it's, you know, if we look at the stock, I'm going to turn the camera back on. If we look at the stock, what do we see the stock doing? How do you know a stock is actually transitioning? It's when it starts to, when, when it's in a downtrend, so initially in a downtrend, under the moving average, and finally, moving average catches up, but it doesn't break down, like it did here, back here, right? It broke down. Here, it didn't break down. And the moving average starts to point up a little bit. Can you play it? Uh, can you find a way to get in it? Yes, that's what we look to do. Swing trading. This is this would have been my swing trading entry right here. But I, I didn't play this as a swing trade. I don't even know if I played it as a swing trade or not. But I know that the day before earnings, the company looked like this. So this is how the stock looked the day before earnings. Uh, now, so here's the idea. Here's the idea. Guys, if you don't mind, uh, like Harry, your question, you could wait with that kind of question because I'm reading the comments while I'm presenting, so it kind of distracts me. Okay, I'll give you the link later on. But ask me at the end of the presentation. If you don't mind, try not to interrupt me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, so so here's, here's the thing. When it comes to earnings announcements, 
this is the big thing okay I'm gonna just turn on the camera so you, you see me this is the big deal about earnings it is not really about how good the earnings report is can I predict it based on the chart can you predict it based on the chart no you can't you'd have to have inside information to be able to predict how good the earnings report is gonna be and who's got time to to scan like today I just scanned 75 stocks on the earnings list do I have the time to even review the company's fundamentals 75 of them no so what it is about what earnings is about is about expectations okay so if it's a bullish stock so listen to me carefully please if it's a bullish stock and investors and traders have low expectations for it again it's a really bullish stock how do we know it's bullish stock it's either transitioning on the daily chart so it's ready to break out or it's already in a well-established uptrend but investors have low expectations for it that's the kind of stock you want to play long got it because it's bullish it's the Michael Jordan of stocks and yet people have low expectations for it guess what when the company reports there it's probably gonna blow out expectations now the next question should be is how do you know this company how do you know investors have low expectations for this stock how can we tell let me show you let me take the camera down and show you so check it out we already said this stock was transitioning higher based on the basic unit which is the only thing I know to do that I know how to read this is the basic unit we already said this is actually really looking really good and the day before earnings the company the stock printed a red bar what what is a red bar what does a red bar tell us about the expectations amongst current stockholders stock uh, stockholders that are in the stock right it tells us they're pessimistic exactly it tells us that they're getting out of the stock before it's reported before the company reports they're thinking it's not going to be a good report am i uh, do you agree with me or what do you guys agree with me or what would you get out of a stock that you're in would you get out of a stock that you're in if you thought it was gonna gap up you wouldn't would you you wouldn't so why were they getting out of it because they had low expectations they thought it was not gonna be a good report but I can tell based on the chart that this is a good stock a good-looking chart guess what that's the idea you got it if you understood the logic so far you got it yeah okay you got the idea now it's it becomes a matter of applying the principles how do we enter how do we manage when do we get in when do we get out the mechanics of it easy to learn I can teach that to a seven-year-old literally I can teach that to a seven-year-old but what I can't maybe teach a seven-year-old is the psychology which I just I just shared with you right the psychology so so that was the idea that I discovered in 2010 that I discovered and I did not trade it for seven long years because I'm not a gambler I don't like to get in front of a company that's just before it reports that's a bit like gambling what if it's a bad report and the stock gaps down but I've had enough of watching and analyzing without doing anything about it that I got sick to my stomach I said the hell with it I'm jumping in the sharks uh, crocodiles I don't care I'm jumping in so I went in and I was pleasantly surprised the first earnings season April May that I did it that I did that was my very first one of 2017 I didn't do very well I probably made a few thousand bucks because I was new I didn't know how to get out the next day when to get out when to get in how to share size how do you share size how do you know what how much the stock is gonna gap how do you share size it like should I buy a hundred shares a thousand shares a million shares how do you how can you so I didn't know all of that but in the very next quarter July August 2017 that's when I made no it wasn't the next very next quarter. it was the quarter after that in 
in November, October, November, that's when I made the $78,000, which again is, uh, there's a video of it that you can go online and just look it up, right? We talked about it earlier. Just Google nightly game plan. It should be the first link that comes up. So that's the idea. Um, okay. So, okay, so I'm going to keep going here and I'll catch up on some of the questions later on because we want to also get, you know, get going here for trading. I mean, to, to trade the afternoon, we don't, we're just getting started here. So anytime I see a stock that's bottoming, that's looking like it's in a transition A with low expectations the day before earnings, see this red bar? Notice the, the curling moving average. So it's good to be able to read the charts. For example, meaning... If you try to do this on your own and you just say, well, you know, I want to buy every red bar before earnings, you'd probably lose money. You need to buy stocks that are bullish that, uh, and that are not extended and bullish and that have low expectations. So if you have a transition A and the stock has a big red bar, then that's a good stock to play long. They don't always, they don't all work because sometimes the, the report does turn out to be pretty bad. Or the CEO does say, well, I'm stepping down. Or they say, well, we discovered we have a uh, an accounting uh, uh, issue and we have to restate our financial statements. And the stock might gap down anyway. So it's not a guarantee, but give me a trade that's a guarantee and I'll bet everything I have. There's no such thing as guarantees. Okay, so you have to, so I decided to jump in. And when I see a stock that has a transition A and setting up the way I like it, then I play it long. Anytime I have a transition A, these are all plays that I took that members of the Strategic Swing Trader newsletter have taken as well. So again, I'll catch up on the questions later because I see I see them flying through. And if I were to try and answer them all, we would just run out of time in five minutes. You know, we just run out of time. Um, okay, so I showed you the transition A. Let me show you transition C, which looks very similar. This is, my friends, transition C. Inside of that basic unit inside of the basic unit this is transition C so hint hint you better get familiar with that basic unit pretty quickly if you want to take advantage of this on your own if you don't want to follow my plays you don't want to subscribe you just want to do your own thing you better get really good at reading the basic unit so this is transition C and if a stock is setting up as a transition C short into earnings I'm going to get in it short. I'm going to get in it short. You might say, well, this gap, this only dropped 50 cents. No, it dropped $2, which for this stock was 20%. Now, where was the exit? That's again, that's what I had to learn later on is how do you manage it the next day? Because sometimes, look at this. Sometimes they drop in your favor. They gap down in your favor. And if you get out of them, you're going to end up kicking yourself. This dropped $12 more after the gap down. On the other hand, this next stock that we looked at, after the open, if you didn't cover it, it rallied one and a half dollars, which for this stock was 20%. Does that make sense? So you have to know how to manage also, which I, it took me six months to learn how to just manage basically. Because I, I, the first quarter, I think I barely made any money, even after discovering this and being already proficient with my swing trading and day trading and being proficient with reading the basic unit. So at any rate, I don't want to go over each chart. I'm just, I guess I'll just show you a few here, here and there, but I'm not going to go over each chart, but that's a transition C. If it sets up as a transition C into earnings, I'm going to do it short. If it sets up as a transition B, climactic or run up into resistance, um, then I am going to do it a short, a short. You see this? SYY is the name of the stock. Ran up for four months and then accelerated into resistance on the monthly chart into earnings. Guess what? That's a short. Uh, that's a short. Ran up multiple bars into the trend line. That's a short. And a bear stock running up into earnings. It's like, again, bear stock running up into earnings is like a bullish stock pulling back into support into earnings. So, so this is, I just want you to understand the psychology. It's the opposite of a stock that's bullish with low expectations. This is a bearish stock with high expectations. Does that make sense? 
a bear stock with investors buying it ahead of earnings, meaning it has really high expectations, but this stock has been in a downtrend, meaning it has a history of reporting bad numbers, of gapping down, of selling off. So that's something that you want to short, not play long, okay? So the same here, so I'm just not going to you know, waste too much time going over each chart. Same here. These are every single one of these are plays that that we took that we took and they again they don't always work, but this is the you know but they when they when they do it's amazing, it's amazing and this is the fall into support so it's a climb it's like transition D it's like transition D, basically, then the I discovered that with transition B, if you have an unfilled gap above if a stock has an unfilled gap above wasn't able to fill the gap, oh, that works even better than just transition B because it means the stock wasn't able to rally back up into a void. A void is like nothing above. There's nothing above. Let's buy the stock. But no, this stock couldn't even rally back into the gap fill. That's an extra confirmation sign of weakness. So if a stock runs up into resistance with a, an unfilled gap above, I'm going to short it into earnings. Same here run up into resistance with an unfilled gap to the left, short. How much did it gap? 20% or more from 37 to 30, about 20% to 3150. Look at this. Amazing, right? With an, all unfilled gaps, unfilled gaps. So this is like, I call this the run, pa the, the run play, but this is like transition B with an unfilled gap above. See it? Okay. So that's pattern number three. Now the pullback pattern is the easiest. We have a stock that's in an uptrend and pulls back to the rising 20, basically. In an uptrend, pulls back to the rising 20. Now I want to be 100% honest with you, okay? You might say, okay, got it. This is easy. Tomorrow you might think, let me just look for bullish stocks that are pulling back to the rising 20 and play it. But you have to be careful because you have to know, you have to be really good at chart reading. Not every pullback to the rising 20, I'm not going to buy every pullback to the rising 20. There are some stocks that are not as bullish as they look. Other stocks are more bullish than they look. Got it? You have to be, you have to know what you're doing also. Beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful. Okay? Beautiful. Look at this. Okay, so I, more, more of the same, so I don't want to spend too much time. And then this is a rally into the declining 20, a rally into the declining 20, a rally into the declining 20. This is GME. We did it while I was in Chicago in June. You see it? I was in Chicago doing the mentorship in person, did it short. You see, uh, June, in June of last year. Um, August, I don't know which stock this is, but look at this, beautiful. Look at, this is gorgeous. Stock gap down, unfilled, no, it filled the gap actually. And rallied nine bars in a row into a declining 20. Oh my God, that's such a good short. Beautiful, 27% gap down the next day. So I call this the pullback or the counter rally. So pullback if it's in a in an uptrend or counter rally. It, I don't I don't want to give. So I'm teaching you actually 12 patterns, not six, but six long, six short. So I don't want to keep you know changing the name whether it's long or short. It's the same name. It's a pullback or a rally to the right declining 20 in this case. And I also discovered that it has a subset. It has a, a variable. Uh, there's a pullback and retest, so you get the initial pullback, but you also get a retest sometimes. If that sets up, if it sets up like this into earnings, I'm gonna play it long into earnings. See it? So pullback, retest. So that's the W pattern, kind of like the W pattern into earnings, or the M pattern into earnings also. The M pattern into earnings. That's uh, so. I, this is like I'm considering it to be the same pattern as the pullback, but it's really with a twist, with a with a little tweak. And then the breakout pattern, when the stock is in an uptrend or a downtrend and is basing as a breakout, breakout play or breakdown play. So stock basing, you might say, well, these narrow range bars, are they good? They're actually great because it shows the stock has, uh, this is a continuation base, right? Reversal bases have big bars. The reversal bases reverse the, the trend. So if the stock is in an uptrend, they usually gap down. But when, when it has narrow range bars, then I know it should gap up. So that's a good type of a base to have, narrow range bars. See it? Breakout is one of my favorite patterns, by the way. It's not the favorite, by the way. Does anybody know what the favorite is? Does anybody know what my favorite earnings setup is? Is This is one of the favorite, but it's not the favorite. And the breakdown. Breakout, breakdown. 
Okay? Look at that. When you see a breakout failure like this, this had a breakout failure right here. Right here. Uh, an attempt to go higher in failure. An attempt to go hi higher failure. An attempt to go higher in failure. Guess what? It becomes easy as pie, almost. And then I like the grind also. When the stock is just grinding down, not really basing necessarily. It's just grinding lower, small narrow range bars into earnings. It should gap down. Right, this should go. This was this is from August of last year, so it's not such an old chart. It's just a few months old. See it? Grind and then a gap down. Grind and then a gap down. And uh, again, don't I hate to show you my PNLs, but there's so many fake traders out there that show you nothing and they just talk the big talk and they don't show you proof. That's how you know they're fake, by the way. Just hint, hint. That's how you know they're fake. I didn't include. Look at this. Just every day, almost. This is I didn't even update these. I ha I use these PNLs for last time I did this webinar f six months ago. I didn't even update them. No, July twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty sixth, and I was trading two accounts, so this should have two. So seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand that day, because it's the same day. It's just two different accounts, one small, one big. Twenty ninth, thirtieth, right. 31st this is again same day but just uh, different accounts 15.2 16 you get the point it's just it's an amazing and this is August 7th August 8th August 9th my best day last year my second best day ever overall and then you know August 14th 17th I want to show you this one in a minute here this is the biggest gap in my favor ever Fran F-R-A-N on on September 10th of last year. It gapped 100% in my favor. Can you believe it? 100%. Okay. So uh, I hope that makes sense. I don't want to go over the like the exact checklist and more information because I want to switch over to, to trading. So I, ha I had more stuff to show you, but I want to go to live charts and see what we can find this afternoon. But before I do that, and this is my, well, this is my nicest play probably, the CNDT. From last year, this is probably the biggest play. Unfilled gap, breakout failure on huge volume, and then panic buying into the declining 20, the next day gap down, and this is, it made $21,923. That was my biggest play last year, 22000 basically. The, the one below it is NKTR, so just, it's very small, so I'd have to like zoom in or something like this to make it, I can just make it bigger like that. Anyways. NKTR was the second biggest. Oops, I messed up the, the whole thing now. <laughs> um, anyways, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. So this was this was the CNDT from, from last quarter, or the quarter before it. I think you can, the, the presentation is back to normal. So I don't want to keep going, but I want to uh, I want to say if you have any questions, uh, reach out to customer service info at t3live.com info at t3live.com okay now I'd like to get your questions uh, let's see what your questions are so I'm going to turn on the webcam and see what your what uh, get the uh, answer those questions uh, uh, Apple look we'll look at Apple I think Apple reports at the end of the month is that right Apple reports let me check I'll check right now Usually it reports at the end of uh, at the end of January, at the end of April. So reports on the twenty eighth. Oh wow, that is tomorrow. Tomorrow after the close. So we'll check uh, we'll check Apple tomorrow, and I'll let you know tomorrow whether I'm gonna play it or not. You're in the room, but you're also in the strategic swing trader, so you will know whether I'm gonna play Apple or not. But it doesn't report until tomorrow after the close. So we'll look at it tomorrow during the day, but not today. Tomorrow. Um. Let's see. Does the volume play a part? No, it doesn't play a part. I mean, for the most part, it doesn't play a part. There must be a good deal of people getting out uh, not to gamble, probably, but it shouldn't. But again, if they're getting out, bec that's because they have low expectations. So I don't mind. Does that make sense? Uh, who asked? Uh, so if, if that's... So I don't mind getting out because they don't want to gamble or getting out because they they're you know because they have low expectations for the stock it's it's almost the same thing is walmart reporting earnings tomorrow no it's not reporting at least not on my list so maybe 
If it is reporting, it'll be after the close. Let me take a look. No, it doesn't report until uh, uh, retail stocks don't report until later in February. Doesn't report until uh, February 18th. Okay. Let's see. But earnings uh, in, in a phase phase transition A, you mean, is based on the past quarter, which is which pri when price was flat. How do you protect earnings? Because I can read that the stock is transitioning correctly. If it's transitioning correctly, and then I know it should gap up. Okay. All right. So I hope that makes sense, Fernando. Um, I know we put a lot of emphasis on the daily, weekly, and monthly charts when determining earnings plays. Do you ever look at the 60 minute? I do not, Eric. That's a good question. Somebody asked me in the past. I don't look at uh, the 60 minute at all. I didn't because I did check it out and I didn't find any correlation between the 60 minute and the earnings gap. Didn't find any correlation at all. So I don't look at the 60 minute. Uh, WMY, or you mean WMT, Walmart. Uh, going climactic well again doesn't report until February 18th so we're like almost a month away uh, let's see uh, what percentage of the account are you risking per trade that's a good question it's not a percentage of the account that I'm risking that matters what matters is I don't know what the percentage is what matters is is that each earnings gap on average gaps between five and a half to six percent so from quarter to quarter is different. Over the last two years, the average gap was, I can tell you right now what the average gap is. You actually have have uh, your, you have that information available to you. The average gap over the last two years has been, I'm going to tell you exactly how much it's been. Uh, the average gap is, has been 5.5%. So based on 5.5% gap, up or down, in my favor or against me, then I can share size properly. Does that make sense? Because I expect, on average, over a series of trades, to, to have uh, the gap to be, to be between 55 to 6%. Last quarter, I think it was 6% on average. But over the last two years, it's been 5.5%. Consistent. Every quarter, between 55 to 6%. So, so based on that, I know how much to risk because I know that on average it's going to gap five and a half. Sometimes I'll get 30% gaps, but a lot of times I'll get 1% gap in my favor or against me. So they even out and eventually the average gap size is six five and a half percent, five and a half. A TCO posted by Ifan, so check it out. Will you comment on position sizing? So did I just do that or not or what, John? I hope I just did it. I think I just did it. So, so I'll, I'll do a little more. Let me just show you. Let me maybe bring out Excel. One second. So, for example, check it out. Check it out, John. So, the average gap is, let's say, 6%. It's 5.5. But let's just say 6%. What's your risk? What's your risk, John? How much do you want to risk per trade? How much do you want to risk per trade? 100 bucks? 200, 500, whatever it is. Let's just say 100. You go $100 divided by 6%. That tells you how much you should buy or short $1,666 worth of stock. So if the stock is $100 or trades at, let's say, 2350 per share, then you say 1,166 divided by 23, 70 shares. Is what which is 71 shares is how much you should buy. So let me let's start. Let's repeat this. Let's say you want to risk a thousand dollars per trade. So so here it is. Average gap is six percent. Risk per trade. Desired risk per trade is a thousand bucks. Let me open this up. There we go. And let's say, let's say, uh, what else? Oh, and then, so share size, share size is you take $1,000 divided by 6%, not multiplied, divided, divided by 6%, tells you how many shares, not shares, how much you should buy worth of stock. So you, and then stock price. 
let's say is get whatever you want 50 bucks what is the stock how much how, what, what is it trading at eight bucks a share eight dollars a share then you say then share size uh, in terms of shares in this case here in terms of dollars you go sixteen thousand six hundred sixty six divided by eight dollars a share it means you should buy not two thousand dollars but two thousand shares so let's fix this does that make sense so that's how I calculate my share size now um, now I use so a lot of platforms they they can calculate the share size for you if you just specify the the dollar amount that you want they'll do the math so you don't have to do it you don't have to take out a calculator and start doing it or you can use I have a Google sheet that when I put in the symbol like Apple it gives me the the, the, the current price and next to it I have the formula so it, it does it for me but a lot of platforms allow you to you know they, they do the share size for you they figure it out based on how much you want to put up per in each put in each position got it so that's the sh how the share size is calculated all right um, we feel okay I'm just uh, fielding through the comments uh, they'll be emailed between 3 to 3.30, usually between 3 to 3.30. Sometimes I send them out at 2.30, but I, I like to, to see what the stock is doing closer to the end of the day, so usually between 3 to 3.30. Uh, and I will be, yes, you'll be getting the er my earnings plays this week for free. Now, be careful, though. Not every gap is going to be 6%. Some might be 20%. Some might be more. Just, just FYI. So my recommendation is paper trade this week. If you want to do it, paper trade. Usually, this is not the best week anyway for earnings. It's the, it's the first week of February. First two weeks of February are the best. Likewise, when I had that monster month in August, notice July, earnings season started in July, but I didn't really get going until August. So the same here. Usually... Uh, the the end of uh, January is okay, which is this week, but the, it really gets better the first two weeks of January of February. So so this week maybe if you want to paper trade them, feel free. You want to do a very small size, up to you. But uh, but be careful because it's it's a risky strategy if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, uh, let's see. So where do you put your stop? There's a management method that I follow, but there the stop doesn't hold over overnight. So I don't put a stop in the system until the next day. Do you recommend any broker and what software? I really do like interactive brokers for this earning strategy the most because you can, I mean, it's just the best. They have all the shorts. They have, you can use, uh, you can use chart trading. So you can use you have, for your stop, you can put the stop on the chart. And then they can share size for you. Uh, so I, I really do like IB, but IB costs five mils, or f they charge five dollars per thousand shares. It's expensive compared to free. It's expensive. If they charge maybe two and a half dollars per thousand shares, they not do it. But IB is expensive, so that's why I don't like IB that much anymore. Uh, I'm with this quarter. I'm trading with TradeStation. This quarter I just started with TradeStation. Uh, but I also use E-Trade for, uh, you know, sometimes like uh, TradeStation is a bit slow. So sometimes I just use also E-Trade. The last quarter I did it with E-Trade. This, this quarter I'm doing it with TradeStation. Uh, I like IB the most still, but IB, as I said, is expensive. And there, everything else is free. Every other broker is free. Um, do I usually take naked option calls? No, I don't. Is there a minimum amount we need to work with for earnings plays? No, there isn't. You can risk uh, 10 bucks to see how it works and buy 20 shares, or you can do 100, you know, whatever you want and buy 200 shares. So there isn't a minimum, really. It's how much you want to risk. Um, uh, how do you proceed if a position goes against you? There is a management that I, a policy that I follow. Basically, you just for the, the basic version of it is you put your stop under the five minute bars, low or high. If it gets stopped out, then you're out. So that's the basic version of it, but um, I don't have the time to go into it in too much detail right now. Do you always buy just 20 uh, above the 20 MA? No, I don't. Uh, who's asking? Do I always buy just above the 20 MA and the 200? No, I don't. Um, 
uh, does Thinkorswim have that? I, I don't know if they do or don't. I don't use Thinkorswim. Do you stay away from hard to borrow stuff in general? Um, if the, if I can locate them, then no. And it has a good setup. Why not? If I can locate the stock and a trade station, it's free. If I can locate it, and you know, so why not? The last question. Yeah, you got you, Johnny. You got a lot of questions here. <laughs> Uh, managing position after earnings like I said use a five minute high low so just stop it under the five or just get out of it at the open all right I'm gonna go ahead sorry there's tons more questions but I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording for now and switch over to live charts because uh, we need to trade I mean it's already what time is it it's 1 23 so I hope you enjoyed today's webinar again if you're tuning in on social media link is in the, is in the description if you want to join us in the open house or just feel free to reach out to T3Live, uh, info at t3live.com, okay? Thanks so much, everybody. I'm gonna stop the recording right now and get going with the charts. <laughs>